Hey folks, welcome into the News 12 Now Desk. Thanks for joining us here on this uh, Wednesday, June 19th, 7 o'clock here on our Wednesday, Juneteenth, actually. So, a uh, happy Juneteenth to all who celebrate out there. We are back with another edition of the Fast Cast, and uh, let's get right into it now. We're starting off with the runoff election for sheriff, and it looks like there's going to be a new sheriff in town, Eugene Brantley beating out incumbent Richard Roundtree. Last night the race was neck and neck, but Brantley ended up pulling away a little bit, 53% of the vote going to him, while Roundtree was able to pick up 47%. Brantley made a celebratory post on his campaign Facebook page Tuesday night, saying his victory is a testament to the hard work and dedication put in. He says he thinks this win reflects that Augusta needs change. And while it's not guaranteed Brantley will become the next sheriff, he did knock out Roundtree, who's been in office for 12 years. The sheriff's race was the highest profile one on the ballot here locally, and the events of the past couple weeks only helped Brantley possibly uh, based on what we saw in the original race and now here in the runoff. And after last night's victory, his biggest phrase was thank you. For my supporters, I, I'd just like to say thank you. I couldn't have done it without them. And, um, you know, it's, it's like anytime people invest in you, you want them to know that you've given it your all, regardless of how it turns out. Brantley could face Richard Dixon in November, although Dixon is still working to secure enough signatures. He has until July 9th to get the required signatures to be on the ballot. Taking a look here at some other races we were tracking, the Augusta Judicial Circuit, where Charles Lyons picked up 65% of the vote over Matt Matson. State House District 131, Rob Clifton winning that one almost 3-1 to one over Paul Abbott. This was the close one here. McDuffie County Commission Bill Jopling got 51% of the vote to Sean Kelly's 49. I think it was 22 votes, 23 votes, something like that, separating the two. Uh, and then Emanuel County Commission, this one was not officially called yet, but Johnny Moore has about a 10% lead over at Chandra Hooks. So you can find all these results on our website, WRDW.com. A new food pharmacy at the hub is helping pregnant and postpartum mothers make sure they get the right resources for nutrition. The National Institute, oops, the National Institute of Health ranks Georgia as number two in the country for maternal mortality. And what's the biggest issue expecting moms face here in Augusta? Well, access to healthy food and knowledge of how to take care of their body both before and after giving birth. So Augusta University, The Hub, and Augusta Locally Grown are all teaming up to find solutions and teaching moms to use food as medicine. What we're doing is we're helping moms um, use food as medicine. We take uh, healthy, healthy items that are produced by our local farmers and we um, provide that to moms enrolled in our program alongside with teaching methods, um, how to make healthy meals for yourself, how to shop for healthy, food, healthy foods, and how to access healthy meals. Dr. Vernon says the program also offers a cooking class. That next class is actually happening today, so if you want to head out there, leaders say they are looking for women with chronic health conditions, food insecure, and expecting or recently postpartum. If you'd like to sign up, we've got a link up on our website, WRDW.com. Silent crimes is how South Carolina prosecutors describe crimes targeting vulnerable adults. That's because they say they can be hard to identify and often go unreported, but they're seeing more and more cases of them across South Carolina. Some of these crimes include caregivers injuring assisted living patients and adult children spending their parents' money, leaving them unable to afford their own nursing care needs. Local law enforcement agencies say they often lack the resources to investigate these cases on their own. That's why Attorney General Alan Wilson wants to bring awareness to a nearly 30-year-old unit in his office that now has a new name, the Vulnerable Adults and Medicaid Provider Fraud Unit. Receiving an average of 72 cases a year and we're opening an average of 50 cases per year. That's significant, but we think that there's a lot more abuse happening out there and we want to shed more light on it. In addition to prosecutors and auditors, the unit includes investigators who are also pharmacists and nurses. Autopsy results are in for the death of Riley Strain, the college student whose body was discovered weeks after he disappeared in Nashville. The medical examiner says the 22-year-old died from accidental drowning and alcohol intoxication. Police say Strain became separated from his friends after having multiple drinks in several bars back in March. Detectives say Strain fell asleep or fell off a steep embankment, excuse me, and landed in the Cumberland River. His death has now been officially classified as accidental. 
This morning, we're learning more about a murder suspect in Aiken that happened from a, a case that happened earlier this month. Investigators are looking for 22 year old Christian Reeves. They say he could be considered armed and dangerous. That deadly shooting happened back on June 8th. Deputies were called to the Wellstar MCG emergency room for a man who was shot. While looking through the matter, deputies thought the suspect or the shooting happened at the intersection of Safe Creek and Bettis Academy Road. Sage Creek, excuse me. The shooting actually happened on Red Rock Way in Graniteville. If you have any details about the case, call the Aiken County Sheriff's Office. I guess the commissioner is starting over from the process of picking a firm to audit the Parks and Rec Department. The bid for a firm supposedly met the deadline, but city staff didn't initially even know about it. This comes after UPS reportedly tried to deliver the bid uh, before the deadline last month. However, the appropriate city office was closed, so UPS took back the warehouse and delivered it the next day. Officials say the evaluation committee was not aware of the UHY bid when it was talked about for which company to pick. Because of that, Markham was favored by the committee, and commissioners voted to start the process over. I felt like the other bid was what we need uh, with hands-on uh, experience here in the, um, at the government level where it's not just sending documents elsewhere to the, to the company, and it was a more in extensive audit. Commissioners are going to put this on the agenda for next week's committee meeting, and companies have 30 days to submit their bids. Also out of commission, leaders are still looking at ways to help Augusta Animal Services. Just last week, we told you that in April, according to the Department of Agriculture, Augusta euthanized more dogs than any other shelter in the state. A group wanted to come in and provide a vet. Yesterday, commission members turned down a plan from Best Friends Animal Society and asked them to come back in 30 days. They said they're looking for a collaborative plan between the city and the group. With current standings at Augusta Animal Services, they just wanted to give them more time to work out the kinks. Happening today, there's going to be some Juneteenth celebrations in our area. The Band of Brothers Augusta is hosting a Juneteenth Augusta celebration. There's going to be performances, vendors, food, and more at the JBA parking lot from 12 to 9. Then Umoja Village is holding theirs at Eudora Farms. That's going to be in Sally from 10 until 2. Juneteenth marks the end of slavery in America. And to commemorate the day, Senator Tim Scott and Dr. Ben Carson are teaming up at the Library of Congress. In 1863, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, declaring all the slaves, uh, enslaved people free. But in Galveston, Texas, it wasn't until two years later that enslaved people would be free. This became known as Juneteenth. Leaders say it's a day of reflection, and the day is a reminder of the work left to do. We, the collective, have work to be done to make sure that the next generation has more mountains to climb and fewer valleys to live in. Juneteenth was declared a federal holiday by President Joe Biden back in 2021. To find out about these stories and much more on our website, WRDW.com, be sure to check out our streaming app so you don't miss anything that we've got going on here on the News 12 Now Desk. That's going to wrap things up for our fast cast. We appreciate you tuning in. We've got the morning mix coming up at 9 o'clock and then another fast cast at 1150 right before our midday newscast. Thanks for tuning in.